So the Celtics need motivation, huh? Where's it going to come from? I'm going to talk about it and answer your questions right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Prime time, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finish. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making the show part of your daily routine and your first listen every day. I'm John Corrales. I cover the team for Boston Sports Journal, and I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, which you can order wherever books are sold or on my website, uh, johncorrales.com. Autographed copies, personalized copies, 30 bucks a piece. Lockdown Celtics is free. It's available everywhere, including YouTube. Please watch the show on YouTube. If you've missed the show, you want to scroll back, it's all on lockdownceltics.com. So this show is almost like a, a kind of a calmer <laughs> follow-up to the post-game show uh, after the the worst, new worst loss of the season, whatever you want to call it, the Celtics lost to the Minnesota Timberwolves. And I kind of want to follow up some of the things that I said there and, and work in some of the quotes from Mimi Odoka. And I got a few questions, uh, especially over the last couple of days, the Christmas Day loss, the that, that lost in Minnesota, people started sending me questions, which you can do through johncorrales.com. There's a mailbag link up there as well. And I just kind of want to just try to tie it all together here because there, there's a lot for the Celtics to do, right? Like they're still trying to figure out how to get to that point. Like what I was talking about yesterday, and if you missed it, it's especially in that last segment, this is who the Celtics are. The, the hard work and, um, the the effort, the all of the stuff, the focus to do what Ime says, that's the good Celtics, but their bad habits are the worst Celtics. They, they are at their core, their worst habits. And so how do you how do you change? How does that all that change? It's kind of like the tone of this show. So let's start. First of all, let's start with this. Josh Richardson is out of health and safety protocols. So that's good. Some more help is on the way. Uh, interesting how the whole COVID thing is working out. But right now, Josh is out. That's a big deal. I think having Josh Richardson in either of those two games might have changed things. And it let, let's start with, it could be as simple as that, that this team, regardless of their level of talent, what we think of their level of talent, that's you flip some of the, the key players here in that game. And if Romeo Langford was on the, on the Wolves and, you know, one, one of their guys, two of their guys were, were struggling on the Celtics, but Pritchard and Langford were going off for the Timberwolves. We'd be sitting there saying, well, the Celtics have more talent. Look at them. They've got Langford. They've got Pritchard. And how do those guys go off? It's all about your perspective and what you're focused on. And we all know who these guys are. We're super hyper-focused on these guys. We know their potential. While it's very easy to blow off what these other guys are on other teams. So, but let's let's start with the this quote i think i've said let's start with three different things so let's start with me knowing what the hell we're starting with how about that let's start with me knowing what an actual start is and not saying it four or five times let's start with that but let's move on to this quote i asked Ime Odoka about you know where does it, what what's your role because this is the one thing that people want to know. What's your role in this? You're the coach. That's one of the most common things that I get. The coach is supposed to motivate the, the team. So he says, as far as the coaching part, we've got to find a way to motivate them to be consistent. We took a look at some of the poor areas of what we did against Milwaukee, wanted to clean those up. And then some, something else bites us in the ass tonight, the off-ball stuff that hasn't been a problem all year. So it's like you're at times trying to plug up the dam, and every night it's a different hole with something. We're really good at one thing, and then something else creeps up on us. It's an interesting kind of thing because, you know, you you focus, think the Celtics say, okay, this is working. The off-ball stuff, the off-ball defense, this is working. So now let's move on to something else. 
And the guys go, okay, we got the off-ball stuff. Now let's move on to something else. And then when you move on to something else, they, they forget that you still have to do that stuff. And it goes back to my original point of it's the hard work and the habit building. If these guys really want to be serious about this, they're going to say, okay, once you get something, you have to build on it, not forget it and move off to the other thing. You got to build on it. What's his motivation? How does a coach motivate? Brian Scalabrini was on Chris Forsberg's podcast, the Celtics Talk podcast, the NBC Sports Boston one, and he made he made the perfect point recently. He said the the best motivator is playing time. That that's what players respond to. What do what do basketball players want to do? They play they want to play basketball. So if there's somebody who's not getting something, the motivator is playing time. So if it's Robert Williams continuing to make mistakes and leave his feet against non-shooters or chase blocks and leave guys for offensive rebounds, there's been a ton over the past month or so, there has been a ton of overreacting to guys who are making a move, a play, something, and they've given up so many offensive rebounds, putbacks, or wide open shots because there's very little discipline defensively anymore. These guys aren't playing disciplined defense. They're way overreacting. So what's your motivation? It's playing time. And you tell Rob, look, buddy, you're not starting tonight. We're starting Al and we're starting Grant. And you're going to come off the bench until you figure things out. And it's up to you to watch the film and get some extra work in and figure this stuff out and focus. If that's how it has to go, then that's how it has to go. And that applies to everybody, by the way. That should apply if if one of Jalen or Jason are not getting the message, they shouldn't be afraid to sit those guys. Greg Popovich sat players when they weren't playing well, when the, when they were blowing leads. And, and we hold up those San Antonio teams that Ime was on back in 2014 and in, in that Tim Duncan era. We hold them up to such a high regard. But it's not like they didn't have lulls, that they didn't have bad games or bad stretches. They did. Everybody did. Larry Bird did. He had bad games. He had bad stretches. He had cold streaks. Everybody did. But what Greg Popovich did with those guys, he didn't – look, beginning of the fourth quarter and you were just – everybody was just off kilter and you're, you're blowing it. Everybody sit down. Time out. Everybody sits. You five guys, you're in. You, you're playing. And you ride those five guys, and you don't put the other guys back in. If they bring build back the lead, you use your timeouts, you call them, and you, and you say, all right, you guys, we're rolling with you. We're finishing the game with you, and that's how it is. And you got you to do that sometimes. Now, I don't know if they're there yet. That's a, that's a pretty, you know, heavy punishment. It's, a, it's, it's not something you do all the time because if you do it too often – you're going to lose the guys, right? It's that's something that you got to do. Like you got to selectively, but that's the motivation. That is the motivation. And that's the only motivation that really uh, a coach has. Now I'm going to fold in Molly's question who says, am I the only one who does not think lack of motivation is a coaching problem? It shouldn't be Ime's responsibility to motivate the guys. They're getting paid millions to play basketball and are supposed to want to win a ring. There's your motivation. Molly, 100% right. Absolutely 100% on the money. With that little caveat of if some guys aren't getting it, playing time, boop, bye-bye. That's, that's, your, that's your one motivation. It's not about speeches. It's not about rah, rah, rah. It's not. It's definitely not about getting up and yelling at everybody all the time. This isn't college. The dynamic is different. College is basically young men, basically boys, and a coach who is at the top, right? And you're just constantly cycling through players. Guys come in for one or two years, sometimes three or four, but you're just going through. You're, you, it's a meat grinder, meat grinder. So those coaches can just hammer, hammer, hammer because players don't have the power in college. In the NBA, players have all the power. They, have, they make a majority of the money and if there is a mutiny on the Celtics and somehow 
they all said Ime is absolutely horrible and they pull like a Nate Bjorkman type of situation, Celtics would have to eat that money from, from Ime and move on. Not that that is what I think is going on, but I was just saying as an example, the players could pull that. So there's a fine line about that, but you cannot be up in guys' faces yelling and screaming. You can't give a pregame motivational speech like you see in the movies because that gets old. You're playing 82 games. You got 82 speeches in your back pocket. And these guys are around for five, six, seven years. You're really going to have, and if you play playoffs, you're going to have like eight, nine hundred, a thousand speeches, different speeches, or else these guys are going to be like, oh yeah, he's doing that speech again. I've heard that one. And they tune you out. You can't get, there's no rah-rah stuff. That's very situational. Players should be motivated every night to go out there and play because it's your money. It's your contract. It's, it's the winning, it's the championship. It's the fame. It's the commercials. It's all of that stuff. It's all rolled into one. That's not an email play. This is the pros. This is the big boys. This is, you know, you go to work every day, whatever it is that you do and you don't make as much money as these guys, but this is your livelihood. Do you need your manager? Do you need your boss to come in and give you a pep talk every single day that you walk in the door? No. You got to bring it yourself. So they've got to bring it themselves. That's the motivation stuff. Now, the that mutiny stuff brings me to another question from Michael that I'm going to get to when I come back. First, I got to tell you about Truebill. You know, in this pandemic, we've all sat around and just started subscribing to all of these different sc- streaming services. Do you even remember all of the streaming services that you have? No, Truebill can actually help with that because when you get a subscription, whether it's a free trial or something you've just subscribed to, you can put it all into Truebill and then you can go back and go like, oh, wow, I don't need this anymore. Or I don't, I, I, I got two, we got two Spotify accounts. Got to cancel this one. It's all very easy to do with Truebill. That's why people save up to 720 bucks a year with Truebill. You just put all your subscriptions in there. You link your account, Truebill will will cancel whatever you don't want with one tap. And with Truebill Concierge, you can have them cancel the unwanted subscriptions so you don't have to. Very easy. Uh, I I wish I had it when I was going through my whole thing that I get myself hundreds of dollars back from people that didn't want to give me my money back. So don't fall for subscription scams and don't forget about these subscriptions that you might have lying around. Cancel today at Truebill.com slash NBA. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. You can save thousands a year. Truebill.com slash locked on NBA. Also, today's show brought to you by my good friends at Crack Hot Sauce. Crack Sauce is uh, a local company. Made, it's, it's made by a Celtics season ticket holder. And you might think of hot sauce as like peppers, vinegar, and heat that's going to blow your mouth off. But Crack Sauce, C-R-A-I-C sauce is different. They use 10 to 20 different ingredients in each bottle, and it focuses on flavor, not just the heat. The heat's there, but also flavor. If you're a foodie, the home cook, this is perfect for you. But really, you're supporting, on top of all of that, a local company, local farms, where they get all of their ingredients, local peppers from Chelmsford and Concord and Sunderland. This is a versatile, multi-dimensional sauce that is basically an ingredient that changes the flavor, that enhances the flavor of what you're cooking. It's especially good in these bigger, heavier type of things that we're making in the winter. Your chilies, your chowders. This is something you're looking for heat in your chili. Get this. Get the golden pumpkin to add that pumpkin uh, hint to, or the Brian Burroughs curry, which adds that, that added flavor. Check them all out at cracksauce.com, C-R-A-I-C sauce.com. Use the promo code locked on for 10% off. Locked on for 10% off at cracksauce.com. You're going to love it. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Why not make Locked On Now your second listen every day? What Locked On Now is, is recaps of the entire night in the NBA from each side. So are you interested in the Denver and Golden State 
recap. Well, that is going to give you a couple minutes from Locked On Warriors, a couple minutes from Locked On Nuggets, and you're going to get both sides. It's a unique podcast. You can get that anywhere podcasts exist and on the Locked On NBA channel. Let's get back into this question from Michael, who says, back in the preseason, you optimistically predicted that the Celtics players would be invested in EMA success. Are we learning that they aren't? Is it wrong to view the Minnesota loss as the team flipping Ime off, either to test him or because they are done with him? So let me start with the basics here. It's it's not they're not flipping him off. They're not sitting there saying, you know what, Ime, you can take this switching defense and shove it. That's not what they're doing. They're, they they do listen to him. They what they do is they they take in what he says and then they put it out there and they do it and then they say okay we've done it yay and then they get back to hey all right i i i like this matchup i'm just going to i'm just going to go iso this one time and then that means that that gets you into well i'm just going to you know i still like this i'm going to go i'm going to do this you know or oh i got this i we're, we're, we're slipping up. I'm, I'm going to just do this on myself for a while. I think honestly that it's not what you're suggesting, Michael. I think it's the opposite. I think that they have good intentions, but they're doing the wrong things. I don't think that Jalen Brown is trying to screw up. I don't think Jalen Brown is saying, Hey, you know what? I'm done with you, Ime. I don't want to hear your voice anymore. I don't think any of that's happening. I think what's happening is he gets caught up. For example, it's this is absolutely not just him, but he gets caught up in these moments, and it's it becomes a um, you you like I said, you fall back into the things that you oh you know that you can do well, right? If I sit there. And I say, I know I can always go to this type of podcast to, you know, when, when I'm not feeling it, then I would end up having a stretch of good podcasts. And then it would start to like slip, slip, slip. And I would, you'd see me starting to rely on some old habits and, you know, hopefully it goes away when I realize like, oh God, this is not, this isn't going well. I got to work harder to find my topics. I got to work harder to find a guest, stuff like that. Right. Like, and, and so doing something like that every day is, is difficult. And I think that we do have to take everything into consideration of what's happening right now. Jalen, again, for example, only because it's the Minnesota game that we're really focusing on here. He is, he sees a team that's, uh, depleted on both sides. And he thinks, okay, I got this. The team needs me. He's probably psyching himself up. The team needs me. I'm, I'm good enough to take over this game. I am going to take over this game. And like he cuts and I think that's why he come came out and like, yeah, pass, pass, pass. Good. 11, two run. That's great. Then he starts forcing, 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 and it doesn't go well because he's like, okay, We've done this. We've got them going. Now, here I come to save the day. Very Mickey Mouse. I mean, not Mickey Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Mickey Mouse. What an idiot I am sometimes. <laughs> Very Mighty Mouse from, you know, people who are old enough. You know, if you've got this much gray in your facial hair or hair, you know the uh, here I come to save the day. That whole thing. Um, that, that was Jalen. And I think he and Jason for sure, because they're the two main guys feel like they can, they can hit you with that home run with that knockout punch, because that's what we see great players do. That's what we celebrate great players for coming out and throwing that knockout punch. And Hey, sometimes it's a matter of the shot falls. You're a hero. The shot fails. You're selfish and you need to trust your teammates more. It's very easy to get caught up in that kind of analysis. And, and I really don't want to, to ride the roller coaster. Uh, sometimes I do, but it's also true of 
of these guys that sometimes like you can force shots and you make tough shots. And you're like, wow, I can't believe he made that. That was amazing. That's great that you made those shots, but, and it, it's hard in those moments for me to be like, oh, wow, Jason Tatum hit the game winning three pointer. That's great. Uh, by the way, you should have passed it. Like, it's hard for me to have that analysis in that moment. I don't think the Celtics are really throwing Eme's words away. I don't think that they're, I, I do think that they are invested in his success. I think this is something that is hard to do. He's basically saying, um, like, if he were to tell everybody who's right-handed, I want you to do everything left-handed for a week. And you say, okay, I, I can do that. I mean, I can, I can go through and, you know, aside from like writing, like you can sign your name right-handed, but like when you, you know, grab a bar of soap in the shower, wash yourself left-handed, do everything with your left hand as your dominant hand. You say, okay, how long into that process before you go, okay, I've done a lot here. I'm just going to go with the right hand for a little bit. It's like I, the example I used the other day, the, you know, you've done something well for a while and then you say, Hey, I deserve a little reward. And to these guys, the little reward is a little bit of ISO, a little bit of shake and bake. Let me go for my, my stuff. And what ends up happening is you can fall into a binge like that. If you're trying to go for a dry month and you come out of that or in the middle of it, you say, okay. I'm going to, I'm going to do one drink, but I'll, it's just going to be one drink. Next thing you know, you're hammered. <laughs> you're like, whoa, wait a second. One drink became too much. You, you went overboard. That's kind of what's happening here. I don't think, I don't think it's anything nefarious. I really don't. So I do think there might be a, not test, but like, I do think that there might be a little bit of trying to get away with a little but I don't think it's I don't think it's a really nefarious type of thing. And that does lead into a question from Aaron who said who asks, who really manages an NBA player? I'm gonna get into that next. First, I gotta talk to you about Bet Online, which has you covered this holiday season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Football in college, it's bowl season in the pros, the playoffs are around the corner. Bet online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So head on over to their website, use your mobile device, use the promo code locked on, whichever one you use, and sign up for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. So locked on gets you a 50% welcome bonus, whatever your first deposit is. Bet on whatever your favorite sport is. You can play your favorite Vegas casino games. So go ahead on over to Bet Online. It's the fastest. And easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, bet online where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. How about Built Bar? Have you tried the Built Bars yet? I've been talking about them like every single day on this podcast for quite a long time. You're making New Year's resolutions. You probably want to do what I'm doing. All right. I sat there on Christmas uh, with my family, big Greek family, everybody making big, heavy foods and cookies and all of that stuff. And Delicious, awesome boxes of wine because boxed wine is awesome. Uh, <laughs> and now I'm like, oof, okay. New Year's resolution, let me drop a couple of LBs. Built Bar can actually help. Okay, it's going to give you that treat. I know you're cutting a lot of stuff out. It's going to taste like a candy bar, but low calorie, low carbs, low sugars, high protein. You're going to get a treat, but it's not going to crush all of the work that you've been doing. You're going to the gym, you're heading onto that treadmill. It's not going to blow out all of your cardio. Most of these bars contain somewhere around 130 calories, uh, 17 grams of protein, four grams of net, net carbs, four grams of sugar. So throw out all your secret treats, throw out that little stash, throw some built bars around. And when you get into a pinch and you need something sweet, something to satisfy a craving, try a built bar. It's better than a candy bar and it's going to help you out. So try them out. Go to built.com. Plenty of flavors, nut allergy, no problem. If you're trying the keto diet, these work. Go to built.com. Use the promo code LOCKED15. LOCKED15. Every single time, stock up, try different flavors, buy one box, buy 10, whatever it is. 
15% off your order at built.com. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. How about your second listen? Why not Locked On NBA? I'm hosting that with Jake Madison uh, tonight after all the NBA games. I'll have that for you. Uh, and or Locked On Bets. Locked On Bets with your boy Q and Lee Sterling will help you get a leg up, maybe give you some, uh, some good information when you're laying a couple of bucks down over there at Bet Online. They've, they've been hot. I know some people who have been following their advice and they've done fairly well. So check them out. See what they've got to say wherever you get your podcast. A couple more questions here. So I've been asking Jalen and Jason to make these fundamental changes. And Aaron asks, who are the people that help them make a fundamental change like that? Is that something that Eme does personally? Is it something the Celtics coaches that try to help them change? Is it other Celtics players? Is it personal trainers, agents, someone in their entourage, families? Who manages an NBA player? So it starts with, well, first of all, it always starts with the player, right? You've got to be open to making meaningful change. Eme comes in and says, okay, guys, here's what I see. So I see, Jason, I need you to be more of a distributor. I need you to do X, Y, Z. Jalen, I see you also needing to get your teammates involved, but in this way, okay? I want you to do A, B, C. And they talk, right? They have to figure out like, okay, yeah, I can do that. Or I don't like that. Don't feel comfortable doing this. You come together and figure out like, this is the type of player I want you to be. I think you're fully capable of doing that. Then from there, it's, it's really with, it's, it, it really begins with the player himself. You've got to really take it to heart. And we saw it with Grant Williams. Grant Williams asked, hey, what do I need to do? Who do I need to be to, to get the playing time for you? And he said, he may said, drop some weight, be prepared to guard on the perimeter. I want you to be a 40% three-point shooter. Grant lost some weight. He guarded, he guards on the perimeter now, and he's a 40 plus percent three point shooter. Grant has much, much, much more motivation to change fundamentally who he's been. He came into the league with Brad Stevens saying, We need you to be a small ball five. Now, Ime says, We need you to be a perimeter player or a guy who can switch onto the perimeter. This is Grant's livelihood. Grant doesn't have the cachet, he doesn't have the, the contract, he'll never really have the contract that, that uh, Tatum and Brown have. So he needs to take all of that to heart and say, he's going to be the yes coach guy. That's who he's going to be. You know, yes coach, whatever you need coach. That's Jalen, Jason, they're not quite as motivated in the same way because they've gotten huge contracts. They've gotten gigantic contracts by doing what they've always done. And so this is, this is the, the generational lifespan of a player. You come in saying, I'm going to prove that I'm, I belong in the league. That's really the first thing. Rookies come in. They're not really focused on the wins and losses necessarily. They're sitting there going like, I got to prove myself. I'm a rookie. I'm guarding LeBron or I'm guarding Tatum or I'm guarding whomever. I got to prove myself. You see these rookies out there trying to do that. Then it becomes, I got to try to get that big contract. And then after you get the big contract, then you can start focusing on like, okay, now let's, now let's really dig down. Okay, so what's this winning thing here? Um, and th that's generally how it goes in the NBA. They don't come in all rah, rah, rah. They, 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 mean, they all want to win, obviously, but they don't always come in saying, I'm going to do whatever it takes and sacrifice my game to win because they got contracts. They're on a rookie contract. You have four years to, to get out there and make your $100 million contract. That's, you know, whatever, 400, 500, whatever, however many hundreds of millions of dollars these guys are going to end up making over the course of their lifetimes. So now they're a little older. So these guys have to be willing to just say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. And then from there, it becomes assistant coaches. It becomes a personal trainer. If it's Drew Hanlon, if it's whomever else, they say, okay, this summer I've been tasked with making these types of plays. I mean, Tatum pays Hanlon 
and he will tell Hanlon or these guys will tell their personal coaches, these are the types of, this is what I want to work on this summer. I want to work on dribble moves. I want to work on passing. I want to work on blah, blah, blah. And they put on a, they put a plan together and they do it. Now it helps if people in the periphery, family members, the quote unquote entourage, which is basically just friends. Um, if those people encourage these players, you know, if, if one of these guys is going home and somebody's going, why the hell are you passing so much? You don't need that. You don't need that. So if a family member or a friend is sitting there saying, you know, why are you doing this? You shouldn't be doing this, blah, 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 blah. That's counterproductive, right? So there is a little bit of all of this. Coaches, assistant coaches, uh, after practice, got to take one of these guys aside. They all do work after practice. They all do certain shooting after practice. You can do just the muscle memory of dribbling on the, on the left side of the floor. Dribble, dribble, crossover, hard dribble, cross-court pass to the corner to get that feeling, that muscle memory of this is how I've got to do this to get my offhand to make that pass way over there. That's, that's the stuff you work on after practice. And, and when I used to be able to go down and stand on the floor at the practice facility, that's what you'd see after every game, after every practice. I mean, there's one time, remember a couple of seasons ago, when Tatum was working on like floaters and Brad's, Brad's talking and I'm looking, I'm like, so I see Jason's working on some floaters over there. Is that something? Yeah. Yeah. You know, he's trying to add that into the game and it's something that, you know, you might need to rely on. So blah, blah, blah. That that's what, that's what the post-practice time is for. Basically the practice is you show up, you get your treatment, you can do all that other stuff, your lift, uh, not your, your lifting is, is, is later, but you, you do your loosening, you do whatever, you need to do injury wise or massage wise, all that stuff. Go into the film room. You review the stuff you need to review. Um, then you go out into the court and you work on the stuff you just reviewed. The, the coach picks on something. So he says, all right, our off ball stuff was absolute crap the other day. We're going to go into our film session. Here's the off ball stuff. And here's the stuff on offense that we saw, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's not usually like two hours. It's fairly short. You go through your clips. You say, okay, these are the focuses because you don't want to overwhelm guys. Then you go out onto the floor and you say, all right, here's what we're working on. And you do your practice because you don't want to, you don't want to run a two hour practice. You run a 45 minute practice or however long it is. You work on what you work on. Then the guys break, you go into some guys go into lift after that. Some guys go into the training room and get some treatment. And then most guys are out there working on something with a coach. Afterwards, ball handling, shooting, getting just shots up, getting three pointers, going through a three point shooting contest. Some guys do. Some guys are working on specific things of their game. Some of the guys who don't usually play, the end of bench guys, will run a little five on five. And, you know, gets, you know, you get some of the assistant coaches there that are young enough who can run and you just get a little up and down going. That's how practice works. All of this stuff is how. Things change. So Jalen and Jason, when they're making these fundamental changes, starts over the summer. You have to accept what the coach is telling you. You have to then go put that into practice. And hopefully the coach, the assistant coaches, and the players are working in tandem with a common goal. And then the regular season becomes the, the you know, you've worked on all this stuff. Let's see it in practice because it's different with in Drew Hanlon's gym, in the Auerbach Center, all of that stuff. Once you get out there and you've got, you know, five guys in from another team that are trying to beat you and you're like, oh, wait a minute, they're not doing what I want them to do for me to make these plays. Now you've got to figure out as you're going along, okay, uh, they, they're playing me this way now. I worked on this. How do I work that into this defensive coverage? They've seen me make this play now. Now they're defending it differently. Now I've thrown the ball away. How do I process that and work that into my game? So to be fair, it's still not even January yet. And these guys have not had a full roster and they are trying to do this stuff. And we shouldn't expect it to be a finished product necessarily. So I will wrap it up by saying this. It shouldn't be a finished product. These guys are trying to make fundamental changes to their game. 
And so they're going to make mistakes. And sometimes they're going to fall back into some bad habits. My number one criticism is don't make that the full on relapse. Don't, you know, it's okay. Like I said before, you're trying to make, you're trying to go dry for a month. Okay. So you go a couple of weeks. Do you want to have a drink? Fine. But have it just be that drink. You, you play well for four games and you, you want to go ISO for a couple of possessions. Okay, fine, but don't make it all of a sudden you're going ISO the whole fourth quarter and everything goes to crap. you got to just keep building on that. Progress isn't linear. You're going to have setbacks. Don't worry that the setback, don't, don't get too caught up in the setbacks, but also be mindful of them and build on them and understand, okay, here's how I stop them and here's how I build on them. That's what I want. All right, next game up, Los Angeles Clippers. This is another situation. Clippers are going to be shorthanded. Celtics are getting a little help back. Uh, right now, Josh Richardson is out of the health and safety protocols. So a little bit more help. Not a whole lot, but a little bit. I'll be podcasting after that game. And uh, so subscribe if you have not subscribed yet. If you are a subscriber, either on the podcast or on the YouTube page, I would love if you're subscribed to the YouTube page. Share the podcast. Tell your friends. Tell everybody that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.